everyone, it's Liam the Deaf Doom Metalhead here. I hope you're all well. Um, I've had a new haircut, so I've gone for another Mad Max inspired do, due to the barbers still being closed here in uh, the UK. So I've kind of gone for a Kim Jong Un sweep today, due to it just be too fucking hot, and I just don't care. Um, hopefully, when the barbers open, I can have a normal haircut again, so I don't have to kind of walk around like it's the end of the world still. But there you go. Anyway, I hope you're all well. So, if you're new to my channel, I talk about underground metal, doom metal, death metal mainly, but, you know, thrash, black metal, speed metal, heavy metal, you name, you name it. And uh, I want to try and use this channel to broadcast bands that people might not be familiar with or albums you might have forgotten about or not aware of, um, and, you know, support the scene, because bands need support, um, especially even more now with uh, gigs not happening. And, uh, you know, there's so many great albums out there to be discovered that people might not have checked out. So hopefully you can watch these videos and if you're new, subscribe, check out my videos and you might, you know, you might find something you like. Anyway, I'm doing the band spotlight video this week uh, and it's for uh, good friends of mine. They are Godfrim, which is a three piece band from Yorkshire. Uh, and it's basically a masterminded by a chap called Hamish Glencross, who, if you're not familiar with, is part of quite a pedigree of doom bands. He started off with this one, which is Solstice, New Dark Age. So if you're a fan of Epic Doom, you're probably going to know what this album is. Big, big album in the traditional doom scene. They're a Yorkshire doom band. Fantastic stuff. And, you know, really, really good. But what Hamish is probably more well known for is being guitarist for My Dying Bride for a number of years. Um, you know, he's featured on quite a few classic albums and there's a discography there there's a few live dvds missing as well but yeah uh, when i was a teenager and i discovered my dying bride he was already a current guitar player so i've only ever known him as my dying bride guitarist and obviously then solstice when i found out he was on that album um so he left my dying bride in 2014 um, and decided to do what I assume his own riffs he had in his head or music he wanted to put out there and he formed the band God for him. Now they started off as a four piece with uh, Sean Winter Steels as drummer. Now Sean's quite important as well because he was also uh, part of My Dying Bride for a number of years and also Anathema if you've heard of them and has drummed on their albums as well you know so you know another great drummer. Jazz here, I believe, was also in Solstice once upon a time. And then Rich here, who I'm friends with on Instagram, so hi Rich, if you're watching this. Um, he's in quite a few cool death metal bands I've checked out. Um, not sure of his whole back catalogue, but you know, what I've seen is pretty fucking cool, so you know, thumbs up to him as well. And they put this um EP out, and uh it's great, you know, four four tracks, three full lengths and instrumental. I got it on swampy green vinyl. Through Cosmic Key Creations, who are, I believe, a Dutch label who put out, you know, some really cool reissues um, and, you know, really obscure albums you've probably forgotten about but still exist, so go check them out. Um, and this EP, what, what captured my imagination when I checked the band out? Because when it's billed as former members of My Dying Bride and Solstice, leave it alone, um, you kind of get the idea it's going to sound like My Dying Bride and Solstice. And to a point, you could say it sounds like Solstice more than My Dying Bride. Um, it's definitely got My Dying Bride sound in the guitar harmonies, but I'm pretty sure that's only because Hamish is the guitar player. I mean, when you listen to Godfrim, and then you go back and listen to the discography of My Dying Bride he's in, you can instantly tell that you know he wrote certain riffs because it's just got his signature sound. And Godfrim is a band where predominantly it's all traditional doom with really fuzzy kind of guitars, so that kind of like stoner doom guitar tone but a bit more raw and the drums kind of sit under the riff so it's very riff orientated kind of music um but the awesome thing about it is the vocal style because when they started out i had no idea what they'd sound like i did i knew who was in it but i didn't know who was a singer or who did what I know obviously Hamish was guitar player and Sean was drummer, but I didn't know any more than that. And when I found out Hamish was the vocalist, it you know really surprised me because being a big My Dying Bride fan, I knew he did backing vocals for them live now and again, but I didn't know he could sing. And when I say sing, he's more it sounds more like an angry Yorkshireman pissed off at the world, and it suits the music perfectly. 
it's so so original sounding as well because when you listen to it you know it doesn't sound like anyone else it sounds totally like you know it's originally to him you know there's no one he's not copying anyone there's no signature style he's borrowed it's all original and it, it, it suits the riffs so well and um really really enjoyed the ep when i put it out um and you know me and my mate dan the singer of um, the band consecration who i'm in both loved it both big my dying bride fans really liked the vocal style because it was you know totally different and it really, really captured our imaginations and really were excited for what the full full length would have been now i don't know what band politics were like in the band i know hamish is the guy who runs the band it's his band uh, but two of the guys left and it was basically hamish and sean left and they had a guy called danny come in who was doing i think he was vocalist to start off with he is a guitar tech i believe for quite a few of the bands in the area so like paradise lost my dying bride i know he worked with alan fire when we played with them and he was there and he, you know, he's a really nice guy um, and he's a really good singer, but he was doing more of a clean melodic approach to the vocal style. And it kind of, it dampened what Godfrim were to me. So when they, when they, when we saw them, I think I watched them live on YouTube when they had as a five piece, it, it, it was all right, but it didn't have the bollocks of the original EP having Danny do the clean vocals. So it kind of, it kind of, it, it was a bit wishy-washy. So when they went down to a free piece, Danny became bass player um, and they did a recording, live recording EP, which I have here. So three tracks. And it's really good. You've got Hamish doing vocals still. Really riffy. Sounds fantastic. And you can tell they're having a lot of fun when they recorded it. But the vocals that Danny was doing, it, it wasn't the same. And we got we were lucky enough to play with them live in Birmingham for the first time, I think. Must have been late 2018, maybe early 2018. I can't remember the date, but we played with them at Scruffy Murphy, but Scruffy Murphy's in Birmingham, and uh, it blew me away how great they were. They were, you know, they had all this gear, they had massive amps, massive drum set up, and coming from a band that you know we we had a, a cab in the boot, if you're lucky, but most of the time, yeah, really heavy amp heads and your guitar and a couple of pedals, and that was all you could carry in a car. They came in a van loaded the whole fucking stage up full of shit you know really helpful and uh embarrassing story for me was i had a i lent i borrowed an amp from the studio where we were rehearse and it kept cutting out and i kept blaming the amp and hamish who's like a guitar hero to me came up tried to help me best he can made sure i plugged it in all right and it, you know and it was all right but it turned out i had a dodgy jack lead and it was totally my own fault because you know i didn't have a case so i just to shove it in a bag really unprofessional and obviously over time they're going to get destroyed so yeah that really fucked me off because you're playing in front of your guitar hero and your guitar's cutting out and you look like a proper dickhead <laughs> and it's not the first time it's happened either so anyone who knows me will be laughing their ass off when they watch this because they'll know what i'm talking about but anyway they um yeah we supported them and they, they were a free piece um and danny's on vocals you know it's great but it wasn't you know as great as it was on the ep so when they just announced they were putting out a full length this year through profound law records i was kind of on the fence of what it was going to sound like because you know i played with them at that point twice and they you know they were really good um and seeing hamish you can instantly tell his parts like i said from my dying bride in his musical playing because the lead work the harmonies is he definitely has his own signature sound in my opinion and um when they put out this album this year called Reflections, I'm just going to reflect like mad on this camera because the artwork is well dark. Um, totally took me by surprise because I, I mean, I had expectations to be kind of similar to what I had heard, but they, I believe, Danny left the band before they recorded this album. I have no idea why. It's not been announced anywhere. Um, so essentially, it was Hamish doing bass and guitar, and then Sean doing his drums. This album, you know, really surprised me. It's so good for a for, for like a debut album as well. And um, you know, I guess this is all Hamish's writing, lyrics, guitar work, bass work. 
it, it's a monster, an absolute monster. I mean, the best song for me is Among the Exalted, and if you're a guitar player, listen to that track, especially if you're into more, you know, like doom and melodic guitar playing. The riffs are fantastic, harmonies sound great, and what really made me happy was he went back to that really gruff vocal style that he did on the first EP. So he sounds like an angry Yorkshireman, but there's so much more emotion going on this album. He's really pouring his heart out on some of these tracks. And, you know, it's such a great return to form, especially from when you hear the first EP and you, you want more of that. And this album delivers it in bucket loads. It's so much better. Um, Sean's drumming is fantastic. You know, it sits just under the riffs. You know, it really works for me. It's not showboating. There's nothing like that. It's all really hard hitting to the to the note. And the, the vocals, what really are cool about it is the songs are all different. So... Normally with an album, you'll get one vocal approach, you'll sit at one kind of style. Hamish is going up and down, you can really hear him pouring his heart out on some of these tracks. Um, and then he's got a really like low-end kind of style that he's doing, but not like in a guttural sense, but more in an angry, dark kind of sound. Like it is, it's, it, You have to listen to it to understand it, really, and basically what I'm going to say. Um, it also has his wife, Catherine, doing backing vocals. Now... In my opinion, her vocals should probably be higher in the mix, but it could be my ears um, and the effects on the vocals. But she sounds almost like a siren in the background on some of these tracks, because normally when you have these kind of doom bands that have female vocals, they're really prominent, operatic, in your face. But this, this sits behind Hamish's vocals, and she kind of does like a haunting kind of melody underneath. And it really works. I, mean, I just wish it was a bit louder so I could kind of hear her more, but I think it's probably because I'm deaf, but... It really, really works, and because it's all in house, as it were, it, it really emotional. Really, I mean, see, we we were lucky enough to play the album launch party as um support for this in London this year before uh, quarantine, and we got to watch this whole album played in its entirety, and really fucking good. And like as a free piece, I mean, they got a guy called Bob on bass, like I said, who's a cross between uh, Geezer Butler and Ted Nugent. And he's in a monster of a bass player. He's got this massive sound. He's playing all these really cool leads. And I, I'm pretty sure not all of them were on the album. So it's a shame he didn't record when they did this album. So I think he'd have added an extra layer to it. Because it sound, he sounded massive when he played live. And I'm guessing when they do their next album, you know, it'd be totally different again. Hopefully, you know, in the vein of this kind of style. But we'll see. Because in my head, I, I, they sound like a two guitar band. I mean, live, Hamish does it all by himself and it sounds great, but I still think adding an extra guitar will give it a bit more bollocks live, but that's just me. But yeah, I mean, free profile law, you know, amazing label, so, you know, go check it out, basically is what I'm saying. If you've stayed with me to the end of this video, you should now be a fan of God for him. Great band. Uh, check out the EP, you can still get it from Cosmic Key, I think it's on this website still, so go and buy that. Go buy Reflections now. I don't have the vinyl, unfortunately. I just have the CD. But go buy it. I know they've got copies of it. Go on their band camp. You know, really nice blokes. Got to know them on a personal level. Because, like I said before in previous videos, as a teenager, I was a massive My Dying Bride fan. Still am. But I used to idolise them as a band. When I have a few DVDs I used to watch as a kid. When I was a teenager. And I'd picture myself in the band sometimes, and because I had long curly brown hair back then, I used to picture myself as Hamish in a weird way, as you do when you're younger, and try and mimic being that kind of guitar player. And um, obviously, they're meeting them in real life and getting to know them. It's really fucking weird, but really cool at the same time. So yeah, so thanks for watching. If you you stuck with me this long, basically they're a traditional doom band, stone well not stone of doom, but epic doom, traditional doom. So if you're into that kind of thing and you've never heard them before please check them out. I'll put links in the description below uh, where you can buy their merch, listen to their music. Um, please subscribe to my channel if you're new. Um, I've got bags of materials coming up. Um, I just need the time to make it, really. Um, and I will talk to you all soon. So, yeah, take care. Cheers.